Back in 2010, when I was a kid, I was really interested in archiving, securing data in different medium at different places, so I would always make a RAR, ZIP or 7-ZIP file to compress files as much as possible. But there was a program that could compress so much space into a very tiny size. Hey everyone, hope you're all doing okay. This is Rogat and welcome to this video where I explain the extremely high compression methods like KGB Archiver, some other archivers, how do they work and what's the point of using them. For those who don't know, KGB Archiver is just like WinRAR or 7-Zip, but instead of using those well-known extensions, it uses KGB extension. Now, why is this important? There are many other archiving softwares, what makes it so special? The sole focus of this was to compress files as much as possible to occupy the least amount of space. First introduced in April 2006, it was written in Visual C++, which already makes it really powerful if you know what you're doing with C, but the star of the show was the compression algorithm PAC-6. PAC was used for lossless data compression which majorly utilized prediction by partial matching. The catch was it used so much CPU and RAM. I remember just for a single archive, I would leave my computer on for two days and to extract the file, I would have to do the same. Let's jump into the archiver. TLDR files are made differently. Some can have high compression ratios while others can have really low. Ultimately, the content, structure, type, and methods are things responsible for high or low compression. And you can optimize different programs for different types of files. Having said that, let's try it. I have downloaded it and installed it at first, an error appeared Net Framework 2.0 is not installed. Link to the KGP and Net Framework 2.0 are in the description. We have the latest version of frameworks installed on our machines because of Windows Update and Windows 10, but it doesn't know because it is quite old. Let's launch KGP and compress some files. In the UI, we have several options ranging from good to maximum. I'm gonna set it to maximum because we want as much compression as possible. We're gonna start off nice and simple with a very basic executable, weighing only over 200 kilobytes in size. Compressing it with KGB took 3 seconds and compressed it to about 37 kilobytes. Let's try WinRAR now. It took way less time, but it couldn't compress it to the same level. Let's move on to the second file, which is an audio track. Compressing it with KGB took about 48 seconds and it compressed the whole thing into 2.7 megabytes. While WinRAR again takes way less time, but takes relatively more amount of space. So our findings are consistent for a subject size of two. These files had high compression ratios. That's why we couldn't compress them that much. Let's try a file with a low compression ratio. This is the PCSX2 executable and compressing it with KGB took 3 minutes and 25 seconds and gives us 4.1 megabyte in size. While WinRAR again took way less time but couldn't compress it to the same level. Now let's kick things up a notch. Compressing an MKV file from OBS took about 2 hours, 18 minutes and 51 seconds and the size was 235 megabytes. While with WinRAR surprisingly it was a megabyte smaller, not to mention so much faster. Finally, this is an ISO of Tiny7 which is the lightest build of Windows 7. Compressing it took 3 hours, 8 minutes and 5 seconds and it was compressed about 672.7 megabytes. But again, WinRAR couldn't compress it to the same level, but it was very fast. Okay, so KGB could compress files, but is there something else that could compress files even more? PAC-8 is another algorithm which can use your resources to give you smaller compressed files, but it is a little bit faster than KGB. Fundamentally, both softwares are based on the same parent algorithm. Compressing the same files with this software gives you less file size than KGP and WinRAR. Officially, the ZPack is the software for this, but I found a GUI fork from YouTuber Haley, which is really basic in nature, but it gets the job done. So, is PAC-8 the best tool and highest compression tool? Not even close. There's another tool, PAC-16, which is based on the advanced version of the algorithm. I tried it, but on the small scale, it didn't give me any noticeable differences. And an archiver even above that is CMix by Byron Knoll. Theoretically, you can keep compressing a file by sacrificing your resources. In other words, you can have really high compression ratios, but it will take 64GB of RAM and a lot of threads running for 4-5 to five days straight. It will give you a smaller file size than anything else, but is it practical? I would say no. 
This method is even slower than a sequential memory read. You know the tape storage medium where if you want to get to M you have to first go through A to L as opposed to the hard drive where you can access something instantaneously. Not to mention the instability of these files that are ultra compressed are not going to be great especially if you need reliability. KGB was discontinued soon after it came out. There is a lot of debate about why, but we saw that it is standing against the latest version of WinRAR of 2021, almost 16 years of difference. Imagine how it could have performed and how optimized it would have been if the development was still active. For the latest hardware and even the low-end PCs of our era, it can only use the fraction of its power because it was never optimized for the newer technologies. It will always hold a special place for me. How does compression work? I came up with a very simple analogy so we can understand, but bear in mind it is very theoretical and it does not 100% represent how files are actually compressed, but it is a good indicator. Imagine we have a piece of paper. I'm concerned about it taking less space than it is. One way we could do that is crumbling the paper. It is very fast and if I want to access that information, I can just uncrumble it. It is fast, but it doesn't mean it is efficient. We need as less space as possible. So this paper represents 100% uncompressed state. We're gonna fold it in half. Now it is slightly more compressed than the previous state and again in half and again in half. Suppose we have an algorithm that is designed in such a way that it keeps on going if we keep providing it more resources, meaning more power. We have compressed it to a very good amount, but if we want to go on, we need a significant amount of resources. CPU, RAM and other resources dependent on the algorithm to compress it any further. Theoretically, we can go on and on if we have more powerful resources and it will keep compressing the file, meaning resources approach infinity and time approaches infinity and the size keeps decreasing. Now what happens if I want to compress a paper that's already pretty compressed? It's gonna take so much CPU and RAM and considering we don't have that specifications, it might not result in a smaller file size. Or what if instead of paper, we want to fold iron or steel? Sometimes we cannot compress things further. One other aspect is the process of extreme compression and decompression can corrupt the very file we're working with. Anyways, I hope you guys found this video somewhat informative and enjoyable. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you guys later.